television vehicle in the country. And you did expand Georgia Championship Wrestling into Michigan and Ohio and West Virginia. Were there any thoughts of going further, um, of going all over the country? Obviously, Vince Mann in 1984 did go all over the country and change wrestling. What, were, what was the mindset in Georgia Championship Wrestling during those years when you had that, that outlet? Well, as you know, wrestling had always been territorial, right? Yep. So we were doing just just the same that had always been done from the beginning of professional wrestling, at least in this country, and that was territories. And the only reason that we went to the uh, Michigan area, we did that at first with the cooperation and the even assistance to some degree of, uh, of Eddie Farhat. But he... Well, anyway, things got carried away, and there was a little bit of a, a split between us in that regard. So anyway, we just ran it. He wasn't even running the doggone thing. Uh, I went to Cleveland after calling Vince McMahon Sr., and he said, yeah, that's okay, I don't mind, go ahead, because he thought Tom was dead. We sold out. So there was never any intention on our part, on our part go anywhere else in the country because of all these territories that existed and we were part of the National Wrestling Alliance and we respected that and from time to time we would always bring somebody in let's say from Oklahoma Bill Watts place or from Bob Geigel's place or uh, wherever and put them on our television that went all over the place because people would complain about our TV but we couldn't do anything about that because TBS was going to be broadcast everywhere and that's the end of the conversation um, but we didn't want to take advantage of it in the sense like Vince did by running in these other territories because we were members of this National Wrestling Alliance and we respected their territories. That's all there was to it. You did not want to go because of the nature of the National Wrestling Alliance. You didn't want to infringe on other people's territories. Could you see during that period in the early 80s that there was an, almost an inevitability that the territorial system was going to collapse when somebody got national TV and was we able to had national TV. Yeah, but when some, but but the territory had it before Vince had it. Right, but that we had it for years before Vince had it. But did you see that the territorial system was going to eventually collapse when somebody with a good outlet was going to not respect those boundaries and uh, present? Well, let me ask you this: How much do you know about Vince McMahon's operation? Uh, <laughs> it's hard to say. I, probably a lot, actually. Well, let me ask you this question then. How many times do you think that they were almost going to go under and they required help from other members of the NWA? Oh, you mean uh, Senior? I, you know, I don't know about Senior's operation. I know that Vince in 85... I know in Vince in 85 um, had some problems, and if WrestleMania hadn't clicked, he'd have been in a lot of trouble, but it did click. Um, senior was well, all I'm getting at is that throughout the years, everybody that was a member of the NWA would help one another on from time to time if they needed help, either with talent or however it was to be done. And in the early uh, 60s, Vince McMahon was running, Vince Sr. was running in uh, opposition or running with opposition's territory. Do you know about it? When Jim Crockett went up there? No, no, nothing to do with Jim Crockett. There was one Jim Crockett went up there. I remember Rocket tried to run opposition in there at one point. Well, Johnny Valentine was part of it. Yeah. Okay. Well, then, my point being at that time when they thought they were in a little bit of trouble because these guys were pretty doggone decent, they didn't have the big bucks behind them that Vince Sr. had, but he was he, he was suffering. He was having a little bit of a problem. And so he called on other members of the NWA to give him a hand, and then and, and they did. Yeah, and I know in the, so, se- in the 70s with the 80 Einhorn thing. thing. That was followed all throughout the history of the NWA, and, of course, we could have very easily, being the first national television program, wrestling program, we could have easily done it any time, from 1978 to 1984, but I wouldn't even consider it. Okay. Um, now, when Vince did it in 1984, changed the nature of the business, changed the, the structure of the business and everything like that, what was, uh, you know, and then bought your company, basically, from underneath you, um, what was your reaction as far as... Uh, how how long of the lead time did you see that Vince Senior was I mean Vince Junior was going to go everywhere and also um, when it happened um, from what I gather you know you met with Vince Junior and uh, you were not too kind to of Vince Junior is that correct? Oh no, hated the best. What? Hated him. Yeah. I wouldn't talk to him. Yeah. I uh, didn't say anything that was uh, that was nice at all to him because there's nothing to say nice to him or, or not, nothing nice about him. Uh, 
he was good. He did what the heck he was able to do to take care of our company. He bought some guys out as a result. Again, I covered it in the book. If anybody wants to read it, they can find out. Have you read the book, by the way? Read it from cover to cover last week. Well, then all the questions you're asking me have already been answered, haven't they? I'm just trying to get your take on them. Yeah, well, uh, you know, it's just... I didn't care for Vince. I didn't care for the way things were done. Knowing the past, which, of course, most people don't know, uh, it would be like if I found you on the side of the road with a flat tire and I come over and I help you and I fix your tire, better yet, I give you my spare tire... And then I uh, follow you down the road until you can get to a gas station where you can have it repaired properly or whatever it might be. And then a week later, I find you sticking knives in my tires and uh, forgetting what had happened the week before. So it was just very, very difficult to understand. I knew what was going on, and I knew in the meeting in 1983 when his father got up and... Uh, said that uh, they were going to withdraw from the NWA. Well, then we knew. I mean, there was no question about what was going to happen. Uh, people, again, I cover it in the book, the people at PBS were of the opinion that if you're from New York, you must know everything in the world. And they were very impressed with Vince. Uh, Vince was very uh, eager to please people uh, by doing things that looked very effective in the sense that uh, instead of Ole Anderson driving up in his old beat-up Ford and giving you a ride, Vince sent him a limousine. What were uh, the uh, reactions of the other promoters that you knew when Vince did that? Was there talk of... Oh, like when, when, yeah, when, Vince, when Vince Sr. actually, yeah, when he announced the resignation at the NWA meeting in, in 83, okay... How many of the guys, because I know that in, in 84, I felt that some of the promoters were still in denial. He'll never come after us. He may oh, come. Yeah, that's right. You know, I mean, and, 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 and Vince. Just like me, they couldn't believe they'd helped Vince Sr. for so many different times. They couldn't possibly believe that he would be a part of this. They just, they just didn't believe it. All right? Yeah. You know, I let you watch my wife while I go overseas and fight the war, and you end up uh, having her divorce me, and the next thing you guys are married. All right. Now, 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 because I mean, I know like it took until basically uh, May, I guess, of '84, uh, where you guys ran the show in uh, at the Meadowlands in his territory, and but but that thing, you know, because of disorganization, because of so many different chiefs or whatever it was. That thing never really took hold and never really damaged him in his own territory, and he was running around going into, you know, this, he, he went into, uh, in a lot of cases he went into the weak territories first, so the stronger territories like Jim Crockett, you know, um, who had a strong territory at the time, Fritz von Erich had a strong territory, uh, Watts had a fairly strong territory, although he went into Watts' territory with, with little success at first. Um, they were just kind of like, well, you know, he's going after the small guys. Then he went after them, and everybody was, you know, Nobody was able to mobilize and fight Vince, and then uh, when he got the WrestleMania and Mr. T and all that, uh, to the most people, by 85, I mean, he was wrestling. He had TBS, he had USA Network, he had, you know, people thinking that he had invented this product that had actually been successful for years, and, and then everyone was starting to play catch-up on him. Who was playing catch-up? It was over. Yeah. Well, ask yourself this question. How successful is he now? Well, he's he is is very successful, even though he he has his business ups and downs. I mean, he's worth you know seven hundred million dollars this week, I think. You know what? Let me ask, okay. How successful is Georgia since he's taken over? Well, if you're talking about like house shows in a territory, when the last time they ran Georgia, they did ter they did terrible. How successful is he in Minneapolis since he took over? Well, they, they, they how successful is everywhere else in the country since he's taken over? Well, they've had their ups and downs when they had their period from ninety eight, ninety nine, two thousand, two thousand one. They threw the roof, and the last couple of years they've been down at the house shows. But they they do they do the, the business is pay per view and television now. I mean, it's really not the house shows. The house shows are almost there to get you know pay off the guys and to give the guys time to work out their routines, which is a funny word, but that's actually what it is for their television tapings and for the pay-per-views and to give the young guys experience of wrestling in front of a crowd. The, 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 that's not where their money is, is in the house shows. And, um,